I, I just realized right now my side chain isn't hooked up. <laughs> That's fine. No side chain stream. It's okay. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Okay. Oh, well. <laughs> <sighs> There's no side chain. I'll tell you why. Uh, yeah, so... I'm just gonna pause this. So, let me just spin you a tail. I feel like I can be louder too. Can I be louder? I feel like I should be a hair... Just a hair... Louder? I think so. Check, check. That feels better. Um, yeah, so here's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> there was a uh, a massive hardware failure <laughs> at my desk. <laughs> That's what. But uh, but Apple gave me a call like an hour ago and said, "Hey, it's all ready to go. Come pick it up." And I was like, "You are a day too late, my friend." <laughs> so it's a big oh well. What up, Blip Sounds Discord? Hey, good to see y'all. Of course. Um, thankfully a no data loss, massive hardware. I mean, things are backed up regardless, just, just for like convenience's sake. Uh, yes, a no data loss hardware failure, which is, which is the best kind, I suppose. Like, I suppose, I don't know, but yeah, simple machine won't turn on and Apple support is no help. So, oh, well, uh, by the way, who knows this band? That's the question. Who knows them? Cause they're, they're real good. It's a... It's a little little band called He Heard Footsteps. And we first learned, and by we I mean this stream, first learned about this band on the very first episode of Real Talk. We're on like number 139 now or something, 140. I don't know, we're way up there. I think it's maybe 140 right now. So yeah, it's Alex Barnhart. <laughs> It's actually good. It holds up. It's like five years ago I heard this band first. It's still good. Andrew Ryan, what's up, pal? First time watcher. Welcome on in. Jeff Lee, good to see you. Natasha, as always. Jay Sabins, yo. Aaron Ransley. Yeah, Ryan, thank you for all the, the Blip Sounds love. Ryan and Blip Sounds crew. Thank you for rolling out here. I, like I said in the, in the Discord there, I was like, I always feel bad being like, hey, come watch the show. <laughs> it's like, it's very much... I feel like I'm stepping like over the fence to say that and like back over again to my side of things. So yeah, I appreciate the, the love and support there. Um, Artie's stream, Sovilli, Jordan Payne, good to see you again. The Midnight Crowd, anyone else? Yeah, I think there's a few. I know there's a few. Uh, I got some tweets saying, hey, it's too late in Ireland, can't make it. Come on, Jamie. <laughs> Jamie Baker calling you out <laughs> if you're watching this again. <laughs> Uh, Narchops, semi, semi pricey soap. That's a new name, but awesome. Good handle. Ludo Favreau, Gunlap. Oh, Gunlap is. Wait, that's that's Eman, right? Is that? I can't recall if that's Emmanuel or not. <laughs> I feel like I saw Gunlap like before. Uh, I called him last stream to be a guest host, and I was like, oh, that was you the whole time. I had no idea. Uh, M and M and E, yo. Another Aaron, another Steve. Farrell, so many good names here. Matt Fisher, Jersan, what up? Yeah, yeah, it, e man, da bomb, excellent. And uh, Derek does sound too, excellent. So uh, today is a pretty crazy um, segment. We're going to be doing this real fast. Typically, if you know Real Talk at all, I'll give you just a quick rundown right now. So this is Real Talk. We're having a look at some game audio demo reel material for some up-and-comers in game audio or just some people who want to get some more traction in their kind of respective corner of the industry as far as where they want their career to go. And we do that by receiving submissions of game audio demo reel and website content, having a look and giving some honest feedback based on what we think as far as how uh, effective this might be for a demo reel. And we've been doing this since like 2016 and we've helped find like a hundred people jobs, like an actual hundred. I think the number is a hundred right now. Like it's, it's hundred even. So hopefully we can do a few more of those. Uh, typically it is one or two people we look at per stream and it's like a 90 minute stream, right? So we can deep dive pretty hard into the website content and 
like the general design and navigation stuff and portfolio materials and like additional um, kind of like tertiary supplementary materials that can be helpful in further, further understanding the content in the demo reel. Today, we have seven people to get through. And we're still doing it in 90 minutes. We're not going to extend this to like a six-hour stream. <laughs> That's probably not the move. Especially considering we have these awesome guest hosts in today. We had uh, Iman Dabom, Gunlap, and Chad help us out with this. And of course, he was on two weeks ago to, to, uh, to guest host from Riot. We have another Riot week this week. But this time around, we have Jeff Seamster, audio director at, on, uh, well, at Riot on Legends of Runeterra. We have Marco Busto, senior sound designer on Legends of Runeterra, and Curtis Churn, who's senior sound on Valorant. And this is a real talk speed run, definitely, Farrell. You nailed it. Seven people. Oof. Kieran, you know it. So we're going to be going. I actually have, uh, I had a loose idea of like getting the stopwatch going on the phone. You know, <laughs> being like 10 minutes, let's go, cut it off, carry on. So if you've ever seen a uh, or been in the room for a gang audio demo derby or gang music demo derby, it's similar. There's like 16 people to get through in three hours or whatever the heck the time is. And they almost always run over time. So I'm going to do my best to not do that. Our, our best. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, I guess before we get, let me, I'll wait until, until the guys are on. Let's give them a call here. Let's, uh, go. It's going to work. Who knows? Oh, there we go. Jeff joined. Curtis joined. Yellow. What Michael up? Joined. Hello. Hey, hey pals. Okay, successful. I keep saying I had to change away from Skype. Who uses Skype these days? Am I, am I 40, 50, 60 years old? My God. So anyways, um, hey, thank you for making the time. 90 minutes during a work week is not easy. I don't take that lightly. <laughs> for three people, especially from Riot. So thanks so much for making the time. <clears throat> and uh, I guess the first thing, um, as we're often doing on this stream, whenever we have guest hosts on, I know we have limited time to get through these things, but it would be awesome if you guys were able to give us a lowdown on maybe what your first paid gig in game audio was, or maybe how you got that first uh, foot in the door, as this is a stream all about people trying to get their own feet in the door, so to speak. So it's important to recall that everyone got their start somewhere. So if you're down for that, guys, maybe, I guess, just down the list. Jeff, want to roll first? Sure thing. Yeah, uh, my first... Uh, my first job was actually responding to a localization internship post. And this is when I decided to do like a major career shift in my life. I was like, I'm done with this. Now I'm going to go work in games. Mm -hmm. And I uh, responded to the ad because I was just like, yeah, let's, let, let's see how this works out. And went in, they were like, okay, well, you can't come in here as an intern, but you know, you can do this thing. And I did end up doing some localization and some production type of work. Uh, but as I was there, the uh, audio director on the team, I just hit him up and I was like, hey, so if you ever need me to hit any of those sound effects in the game, and he's like, oh my god, yes, please, because he was he was he was rolling solo. So that was uh, that was my entree into the game industry. Nice, uh, Curtis, want to roll? Is Curtis here? Yeah, sure. There yeah. <laughs> so I freelanced for about two and a half years. Um, after I graduated from Vancouver Film School, I did uh, a couple of contracts for a sound design website that sold uh, sound effects packages. And then I did a couple of contracts with um, a sort of indie developer that made a Steam game. Uh, that paid for my GDC trips. <laughs> nice. And then, um, let's see, the last one was I did a film, and uh, it got released, uh, it premiered out in Los Angeles as an indie film. And uh, those were my three main freelance projects uh, before Riot. May I ask what the indie game was? Uh, you can kind of think of it as like a, a Turok mixed with Halo with like Gears of War horde mode. Okay. <laughs> basically, basically what the game was, yeah. So all of your passions, right? <laughs> exactly. exactly. I love dinosaurs. Uh, Marco, you're up. All right. Uh, for me, uh, well, I guess I started um, 
back when I was like 19. I was in uh, post production. Um, I was a recordist, re recording mixer for nine years. And within my last year in post production is when I met Jay Wofford, which was our audio, which was oh, the sure. audio lead of Legal Legends yeah. back in the days. Um, so I was part of the, like, rec- I guess I was part of that crew that was recording the first 40 champions mm-hmm. um, back in 09, 010. Um, and then in 2011, I applied for Riot when they got acquired by um, Tencent, and uh, I got hired. And I started as a VO editor because that was kind of like my background: recorded as VO editor, re-recording mixer. Um, but that kind of fell through, and they were like, "Yo, can you sound design?" And I was like, "Uh, maybe." <laughs> and so they threw graves at me, and that was my first champ. And from there, it was. You know, I guess it was here I am now. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I actually, uh, we may have some overlap there because I actually, at my old gig, um, the third party studio I used to work for before Power Up, like, you know, eight, eight years ago, they actually were contracted for the League of Legends voiceover. So I was involved in, like, the casting and uh, in some parts recording and direction editing and so forth of, like, 40 champions also. So, uh, yeah, touched a lot of the same stuff probably. <laughs> Wow, that's crazy, right? And some love for VFS in the chat, too. What's up? Yeah, my, my co-founder, Jeff Tanksock, is a VFS grad as well. There you go. Good school. Um, nice. Okay, guys, thanks so much uh, for, for sharing all that. So, yes, there is hope for us all. <laughs> we can all make it. Um, but, yes, they need some hard work and some feedback might help. So, as far as this goes, again, this is Real Talk. Just for a reminder to everyone watching, we're receiving some content from seven people today. I have the list open on my other screen I did. There it is. And we're going to go in order across from top left to top right on these tabs. But in general, we're, we're going to skip some in-depth chatting on the websites, likely, just for, you know, for time's sake and such. And, uh, but it's still worth mentioning, if this were a typical stream, we'd be going through these criteria here. So we're looking at presentation, material selection, content quality, and distinction. So for presentation, uh, just how things are presented to people who might not know you very well yet. If you apply to some gig, they may have never met you. So rolling in completely blind is very important to have a, uh, um, a very clear communication of, of uh, your, your value as a collaborator. And yeah, how you present yourself in terms of like what's shoved in their face as soon as they land on your, on your web page is really important. And things like how the reel flows and how long it is, all these things. Um, yeah, it's all very, very important. It's just even like titling on the reel. If there's like, if it's, uh, if it's, you know, adequately titled as far as like enough information or too much information, or if it's like just accurate (laughs) as far as what you actually worked on versus what our ambitions like resound designs, that kind of thing for material selection. We're looking at what kind of pieces you've selected to put into your portfolio and your demo reel and what those pieces might suggest to, again, someone coming in blind about uh, what your past work history looks like, what your current skill sets look like, and maybe most importantly, what your future ambitions look like. For content quality, we'll probably be hanging out here the most for this stream, I suspect. It just simply, is it good? Is it hitting that industry standard of awesome that's hopefully always rising in the industry? And finally, for distinction, are you standing out in some positive way? As I'm sure uh, all these guys at Ride are well aware, when you have a large studio, there are just like a ton of applications that roll in for something like a junior or an associate position. So it's very, very important, even if you aren't hired this time around, to make a very strong impression if you can in some positive way. So uh, I guess worth mentioning as well, I keep using that word blind. I am rolling in completely blind. I haven't looked at these pages at all, apart from just opening them and having the, the web page open. Um, and I think the same goes for our guests joining us today. It's already a lot to ask as far as 90 minutes, so to ask them to like prepare notes is a bit, a bit too much. <laughs> and really, in the end, this is kind of most accurate as far as or our, our goal here is to try and hopefully accurately represent what a first impression might look like from a uh, potential employer or collaborator. So, uh, yours already says Jeff Seamster. My man, Marco. I understand that you have some pals from Riot hanging in the chat right now. So I see Oscar there. I know Dan's here also. <laughs> so the whole crew is out. Uh, okay. So are you ready, guys? Yeah, let's do it. Ready, okay. let's kick it. All right. So coming up first, we got Daniel Christian. If you're in the chat, Daniel, feel free to announce yourself. I know I did like let everyone know ahead of time that this is the day and the time. So hopefully we have some people here that can answer questions if need be and be here to you know interact with this whole thing. So 
Uh, we have soundfontplus.com. And yeah, so Daniel Christian, um, portfolio page. We have sound design demo reel right up front, looks like. So I'm just going to go full screen with this guy. And I guess we're going to blast right straight to the reel. Let's go three, two, one, and go. All right, that's all. Get one of those. Thank you, Daniel. Okay, so I will probably be giving minimal feedback this time around, time around because we have plenty of uh, people to give it. So perhaps I'll start with um, Jeff. Just real quick, uh, before we deep dive anything, just first impressions real quick. Just like a couple sentences kind of thing as far as uh, after watching that. Uh, first impressions, uh, some some really high highs there, uh, just like some really nice use of tonal content, especially. Uh, there were a couple of sections in there um, that were pretty detailed in terms of visuals, and there's some like selective addressing with that stuff uh, with sound. And so, one of, one of my impressions on that is, I kind of can help can't help but feel like that element's really cool. What about all the other stuff that I'm seeing? Um, but some really nice elements as well. Cool. And Curtis? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, magic, magic stuff and, and specifically with the, uh, I guess it was, was it, uh, which game was that? The, was it the Final Fantasy one? Or, let's see. Yeah, that's one that, element actually is, is probably worth mentioning is there are no titles on any of these pieces. So you're kind of left going, oh, what was that one again? And that's maybe worth, uh, worth addressing yeah so the 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 magic is, is always a really uh, ambitious thing to tackle because you know the ambiguity of magic can be either uh very creatively freeing or it can be very nerve-wracking and i think that um what they did here was really good uh but having the the magic really match to picture is something that uh, takes a lot of practice, and um, you know, I applaud, uh, definitely applaud the effort. All right, and Marco, you have any any thoughts there as well? Yeah, um, I think the approach of you know trying to add that tonal signature uh, was there. Uh, I could tell that the sound designer really like looked at um, the picture before he started to dig in because you could see that he hit the the big beats. But um, I think what what is really Missing there, something that I really um, hit on on sound designers is movement. Um, the tone effects are there, but they sound a, a little flat, um, and they don't really match the visuals, um, especially towards like uh, that the second to last one. I don't know if that's Final Fantasy or, or some kind of RPG. I mean, um, but I think that in that there was a lot of cool movements that the sound designer could have probably used to express, uh, could have opened up his stereo field just to kind of maybe implement, I mean, not implement, but kind of um, showcase something that can fulfill that world and, and make it feel a little bit more immersive maybe. Um, and then I think with the this, this last video with the big uh, robot battle, um, I think there was a lot of elements missing there. Uh, the whooshes and slices sounded pretty cool, 
But I think what was missing is adding that physicality to the to the actual robot, hearing some of those um, that exoskeleton move and hearing those servos. I think would have been really cool to mm -hmm. to see like how creative that person can be with that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but 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 overall, I think it was a good approach. Yeah, it's a really common. Um, I mean, after seeing so many reels, it's a very common thing to see like uh, sound redesign like this. I think I've seen this redesign in particular, like maybe I don't know, maybe like five or six times, I think. And it's it's like a really common kind of shortfall i think in redesigns in general but just in this one in particular for some reason there's so much going on like it's a pretty it's a pretty ambitious redesign and uh yeah it's it's kind of the thing where someone redesigns something and then they start from of course from scratch from silence and then build up this great soundscape like we heard right now and go like wow it sounds so alive now and you're completely correct it sounds crazy alive compared to silence but it's a matter of just getting into those details even further yeah just like um I hear often advice being like design almost too much and then decide what can be taken away as opposed to inching forward with a little more design here and there. It's a bit easier to kind of just go crazy with it and then kind of pull back. Um, okay, I guess uh, one thing worth, worth asking here is just having watched this, uh, what kind of area of the industry do you think Daniel's looking to land in? Like indie stuff or freelancing or some AAA gig? What do you think? I guess let's go with, uh, I don't know, Jeff. <laughs> All right, sorry, just to yeah. be clear on your question, are you asking where I think that this reel would land or where Daniel's <clears throat> intentions lie? Yeah, the intentions, given the idea of a demo reel being like, hey, this is my teaser trailer for me, and... If you have a minute, like, here's all you need to know about me. And if you want to learn more, there's more to learn. But for now, like, just this one thing. So we try to, one often, like, piece of advice is, like, uh, craft your stuff such that it's not scattered. And it's, like, pretty um, tailored for a certain kind of gig you're going after. Yeah, yeah, okay. I feel that entirely. I mean, this feels very much uh, in the, you know, minimum double a and all the way into triple a kind of stuff at least with the examples that are chosen and the sort of like design ambition behind them that's where i think it would be um yeah if, if uh daniel was trying to reach uh something that was more of like the indie space or something that's a little like uh off the beat path it, it would probably require a, a reel that was designed purpose built for that kind of thing word so there you go dan uh yes dan sf plus that's that's definitely him in the chat so dan sf plus in the chat if you want to get in triple a then good job <laughs> this is doing its job for you and if your goals lie elsewhere then perhaps it's worth uh readdressing but there you go um okay question from to be hero even if you're intending to reach indie wouldn't triple a still show you're more than able to handle it well yes and no and the thing is indie is such a broad term right now there's kind of a tongue-in-cheek uh, area of indie. It's like triple I, and I mean, it just means like indie devs that have a budget and like a production schedule and stuff. You know, that's kind of all it takes. But there are some pretty, yeah, you're correct. There are some pretty high-def indie games out there. But keep in mind, if you want to work on like uh, Delta Rune or something, um, perhaps a bad example because Toby's probably, probably got that covered. But a game like Celeste, for instance, I don't think that a pixel like a pixel 2d platformer team would necessarily look at it at a demo like this and be like hmm this person is the right fit for my project it doesn't speak to kind of those like indie sensibilities or understanding like how that area of the industry works or uh, understanding what kind of games might have inspired the game they're working on that's it so it's more than simply just showing that you can do content and it sounds good it's more like also showing that you are a good fit for the team um, in terms of like, your interests and culture and so forth so, uh, okay, I guess, let's see how our time, let's move on. <laughs> time to go. So Daniel, thanks a lot, man. <clears throat> this is so breakneck fast compared to usual, so I'm sure I'll get used to it. Will Poppin, are you in the chat? Make yourself known. Hopefully you are. Uh, okay, crank my levels back up. Crank this back up, go full screen. Let's go. Three, two, one, and go.
Okay, one of these. Poppin' Audio. Poppin' Audio says, I'm here. Okay. Uh, all right. So, oh, I, before we carry on, as I began that video, I, I realized I forgot to mention on the last one, with, for Daniel Christian, I guess the last note being distinction, um, gents, do you think that Daniel Christian is standing out in a crowd right now with this reel? Is this directed to anybody? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'd say I'd say that uh, you know, with with a little bit more work, a little bit more um, uh, sort of practice on design, I think uh, you know for sure the. I think some aspects of it were a little weaker than others. Uh, I think the gun, um, the sci-fi gun, kind of like unreal looking section, uh, could have used a little bit uh, more work. Um, but uh, I think that the examples there of, of weaponry, of magic, of sort of like a linear media, I think it was a really good um, spread of work. Uh, and, but I think uh, a few more passes... Uh, to go and I think um, it could it could for sure stand out. Word. Okay, so um, back to this reel here then. So I guess the uh, the first thing. So a minute long. We haven't talked about this much so far, but just out of curiosity. So uh, so Jeff will say, what is your if you have one? Do you have like a, an ideal length for a reel you're looking for as far as like what you're willing to listen to? Um, a, a minute almost always feels right to me in, ter in terms of length. Like I've seen some things that uh, have been extended examples that have stretched a bit longer than that, but that's uh, if somebody's like really wanting to show some advanced technique, but in terms of like catching my ear and showing what we are about in terms of like aesthetic and uh, you know, your ability to pull audio focus. Um, yeah, a lot of that exercise is like, can you get your point across in that amount of time? Mm -hmm. And if they have gotten their point across as far as, I mean, I guess the uh, translation, if they've gotten your attention, do you then feel the drive to like dig deeper and learn more as far as watch maybe some supplementary materials? For sure. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. Like, and, and I think that having something that's about that length um, to be just, you know, call it your splash reel, if nothing else, and then have, having some extended examples later on. Uh, and structuring structuring your presentation in that way, which is like, hey, have I got your attention? Cool. Here's some more stuff you can dig into if you want to know more. Awesome. Okay, cool. Uh, all right. So I guess the next thing here. So titling and such, we got Spider-Man, uh, Insomniac, sound redesign. Sure. So, yeah, this is kind of a, a bit of a, a um, disparity between the last reel and this one. So we'll go perhaps Marco. How... I mean, do you find these titles to be, to be important as far as knowing what you're looking at, or do you prefer just to have it clean and empty? Um, I, I kind of do like the titles. It gives me an idea where the sound designer um, is going and also what he's trying to showcase. Uh, like here, I could just see like this is a straight um, sound redesign, so it's very linear. Um, towards the end, he described that he was implementing, implementing that in Unreal 4. Mm -hmm. So that, that at least kind of shows that he is not only just trying to sound design, but also be somewhat a uh, little bit technical. Um, so I think that that is a good approach, uh, unlike the other one that we, we watched. We were kind of like, is this just linear or is he trying to do an approach of also implementation? Um, I think when we're looking for a candidate uh, for game audio, I think that that's something good to kind of throw at and, and kind of say, hey, I, I can also implement if need be. Totally. Uh, it also helps out. Yeah, one thing we've often seen on past uh, segments of Real Talk as well is it's sometimes unclear as far as what's a credit, like what's something they actually shipped. Um, I mean, if I don't know a game and you've done sound in it, like, then I have no idea if it's a sound redesign or something you actually worked on. So it's pretty important to, you know, to show that because shipping stuff is super hard and, uh, and worth, worth mentioning. Uh, okay, so I guess this seems like it's pretty, pretty clearly like a, another kind of AAA sphere kind of real as far as the Unreal thing and, uh, and Spider-Man and such. So maybe it's worth just diving right into the content stuff. Uh, Curtis, do you want to talk about Spider-Man a bit, maybe? Yeah, sure. Uh, let's see. So one thing that I noticed was, uh, I mean, one, trying to recreate Spider-Man's web uh, devices is just super ambitious in general. It's something that's very iconic. Um, I think the, the initial pass 
was successful in feeling like a sort of like web slinging device. But I noticed a couple of things where, uh, for instance, like the pitch of the web when it fires, the pitch goes up when the web is going away from Spider-Man. And so, you know, sometimes that can feel like, um, I don't know, sort of like the, the perspective is off, almost like you're you're hearing the, the web come towards the camera if it's pitching up as opposed to going away from the camera and pitching down. So I think uh, there's some, some interesting work there that can be done with the pitch uh, to make it sort of feel like it's moving away from Spider-Man, away from the camera. Um, I think that there's uh, a sort of almost kind of like a... I want to say sort of like a lack of content between the casts uh, and the hits. Uh, usually in Spider-Man uh, movies or video games, you hear sort of like that whippy cable almost motion in between when it comes out of the device mm -hmm. and, and, and hits somebody. And I think that's important to sort of bridge that gap, almost like it's, it's, one, it's one piece. You definitely want that, um, that full experience of it firing out, whipping through the air, and hitting the person. I think that middle section uh, was missing a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think in general, it seems like movement. I think like like was being said last reel, movement seems like something that's kind of missing here also. It's it's not just like the, the duration, like the phrase of the movement, but also like the context of the movement. So even just the punches and kicks and so forth, they're all kind of samey. So it's not helping to tell the story like you were saying with the, the pitch showing up for this or down for this, like just pitch changes can be huge in terms of helping support a story. Because when you have a kick and a punch back to back, it's not like the same thing happening twice. It's like it's this and then that. So hearing these two different things, even as a pitch change can be can be huge in that respect. Uh, mm -hmm. OK, so Jeff, do you want to talk about the middle section a bit? It's the surge sure thing. Yeah, and actually, I think I think you left off on uh, on a relevant topic here, which is like the physicality of sound design. I mean, I uh, most of my my personal design and most of my uh, direction on audio de design comes down to uh, physicality and like thinking through the movement of things. So um, there's a lot of there's a lot of just like transference of energy and like human movement here that I think is the I think is the real story that's being told and in the midst of that section the dominant sound effect is a fairly uh, constant sound from from that ring of light weapon mm -hmm. that's going there and it's kind of like just continuously pulling my ear away from what I think the actual focus of the scene is which is like this is a fight like a couple of people are going at it they're in danger and all that kind of stuff so I'd actually try I would look for more of that to be conveyed. And I also am a strong believer in sounds that uh, that like evolve and change. And like, that's not just like a selfish sound design thing. That's also a, uh, a way to just keep a listener's ear, to keep a player's ear engaged. And so to hear that weapon evolve over time or just hear some sort of like how it's affecting the air around it, uh, how it feels as it's going past the camera, that kind of stuff. And you do hear some like, some nice like panning and, just general movement kind of stuff in there, but it's more about like what would, you know, hearing for yourself, what would the experience of that thing flying past your face be like? It would actually be really scary and you'd be afraid to get burned or lit up, that kind of thing. <laughs> nice. Totally. And, uh, okay, is so this Unreal Shooter thing, this is something that comes up a lot in on, on Real Talk and like past reels we've seen, and it seems like the 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 consensus in the past seems to be something like it's okay if things don't sound perfect when implemented because the purpose of these clips is to show that a you have an interest in doing this at all and b like you're doing it so if it sounds great then just bonus at that point so i guess my first question is do you agree with that <laughs> i'll go with uh, with curtis here um yeah i think the um well Real quick, uh, repeat the question. So basically being like, we have a certain lens we're looking through for sound redesigns, for instance, yeah? 
as far as like yeah. this the story being told is very it's like it's it's very clearly defined that's the same clip it'll play every single time whereas in terms of implementation there's more for someone up and coming to learn here and as far as like the technical side of things so to have a clip like this in their demo reel is often serving a purpose of like hey this is something that interests me and I'm doing the work like I'm doing the, the self-driven work to do so right so that communication alone is I mean in in, in my experience at least pretty pretty valuable and then I guess the question being like uh, is it is, is, is there like leeway if something doesn't sound perfect when implemented versus like sounding amazing just because it shows like this information with a person right I think g guns are really interesting uh, when you look at sort of how the industry has tackled gun systems across the board from different types of games all over the place like when you look at borderlands they have a very modular uh, gun system that they that they put together it's it's amazing but our like valorant's gun system is very different we 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 do we have a almost we have a little bit more simplistic gun system but we do things like having different angles uh different sounds for different angles so that people can learn what a gun sounds like from a different angle um you know we're not necessarily using um you know, crazy mix techniques to create a gun. So we have a different uh, sort of way of implementing guns than, say, Borderlands, and other games do it differently as well. So having a a clip where you show a gun firing and saying this is the audio implementation, I think it still focuses more on the sound design of the gun than it does the implementation. If you want to say that this is the implementation that I did, then I think you could use just a little bit of the time of the video to say show the logic that you used. How are you mod? How is your gun being built from a logic perspective? What what kind of pieces are you putting together to create this gun? Because you know having creating a gun like a, a one layer gunshot and then implementing into Unreal is much different than doing what Borderlands did. So having that distinction between um, or at least explaining how you implemented the gun, I think is just as important as the gun sound design, especially if you put audio implementation on the title card. All right. So I guess just to wrap this one up, we're at 10 minutes now. I'm a timer out in my stopwatch <laughs> to wrap it up. Marco, do you think that with this demo reel, um, do you think that Will is standing out in a crowd right now? Um, to be honest, I would say no. I can see that um, some of his content is is lacking, um, and that could also just be because of you know the axis of the resource, right? Um, but th there are some sounds that sound kind of flat. Um, I think that even his mix approach, um, adding that perspective, is still kind of um, it st still needs experience. I think you know um, th there are just some points that, that I think need some kind of guidance and some mentorship. But overall, I think he has a good eye in what he's seen. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, uh, like here, for example, where you're showing, like how Jeff was saying, that there are points of, of movement and transitions and perspectives that he could have played off. Like maybe as he created his weapon for that, he could have thrown it into a Doppler. And at that mm. moment, use that Doppler moment to convey that movement and have the actual like element of that tonality of that weapon also move with this. So now the, it sounds even more vicious when you're hearing it run through air. And now you're imagining that that's how that weapon should sound. As a sound designer, that's kind of what you want to convey. It's not about just putting, you know, this awesome sound and saying, I'm done with it or adding a little pan It's how can you add that extra spice to it when you're done with it. Um, so I think that that's what's kind of missing here. And that's why I would say he, he's still kind of junior and there's some things here missing. Totally. Yeah, I'm, I'm right within all of that, basically. I think that just a little more love into the, into the storytelling and, and like what Jeff was saying about you know, supporting um, weight and deciding what the story is about and such is, is a really, really, uh, like when you get to that point in your design where that is your motivation, that's, a, that's really a sign of maturity. So I think this is a great example of like a good start and one that I would love to see a version two on, Will. So yeah, keep, keep at it, pal. All right, one of these. Okay, next up, Biru Jones. Do we have a Biru Jones in the house? 
I hope I'm saying this right. I'm not sure. Zooming in. Okay, we got demo reels, game audio design reel, and voiceover design reel. Okay, out of LA. Wonderful. Let's, uh, this Vimeo. Awesome. Crank this. Go full screen. This is a minute and ten, a minute and nine long. Okay, so we'll probably make it through it. No sweat. Let's go. Three. Biru or Baru? Biru. <laughs> Chat saying Biru or Baru. Got it. Is, that, is, are, is, is 13 Jonesy? Are you Biru? I'm not sure. Please answer yourself. Okay, let's go. Three, two, one, and go. One of these. The chat says some low end, lovely. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah. Give that another clap set, man. It was hot. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. Okay, some claps. It was hot. It's a good start. Let's uh, let's again start with you, Marco. Um, I guess just in terms of length and flow and stuff, was your attention held? Oh, yeah, I think uh, length, perfect. Uh, that nine minute was great. I mean, that one minute was great. Uh, off the bat, man, it was just like, whoa, what is this? And plus, you know, it's Star Wars. So I was like, I was already on it. I used to watch that animated series. So I was like, oh, I know where he's going with this. And then right. just hearing that, uh, that like, energy, that element just spark up and uh, open up, like, that's what I'm talking about. And then mm -hmm. feeling that movement of, like, that energy of the electricity just moving across the, the picture was good. And then, you know, we pan across to the next video and i really love how he still added sound when we went to black like that's the type of stuff i like it's like when sound designers sometimes sound design to picture they're very a one-to-one -one. It, it starts here it ends here but when you can give it a little bit more tail to make it feel more realistic like it's really dispersing through the air like that's when it feels nice that's when it starts to feel natural yeah yeah totally i mean that's <laughs> i've often uh, heard it said that like it's kind of your job in your demo reel to, to to make someone want to keep listening in under 10 seconds. And I think that uh, that's kind of, you just described that right now as far as this opening clip being like, okay, let's go. So nice work, Guru. Uh, okay, Curtis, you have any thoughts on uh, just design stuff as far as content? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with Marco. Like, you know, when you start off with something as impactful as that lightning blast that sort of device powering up i think it's very attention catching um the 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 thing that really i think caught my and, and held my attention though was this centerpiece this um uh, sort of like glass robot uh gun weaponry uh clip that is just that was just amazing but i think uh, one of the things was was that at some points you weren't able to actually understand what sound was coming from where. Um, the guns, the they they do have they they share. I think the main character shares too much sonic palette with the glass characters, and then the uh, robot at the end, as it shoots, has a lot of the same elements in it. So I think where the improvement here could be uh, developing a little bit more sonic identity between those uh, three groups. But I think that the the layers there and the idea and the design was solid. Nice. And you mentioned as far as not being able to tell what sounds coming from where. So uh, do you have any notes on like dimension stuff as far as a little more sense of space as opposed to just simply sense of like 
um, Sonic identity? Well, I think one of the things that I noticed is is when you see the main character on the left and the glass characters on the right, and he shoots that uh, those bullets, those I think like three over to the right, and then almost at the same time you have the the glass characters shooting their projectiles over to the left. Um, I think being able to create a different sound for both of those, a distinct sound that uh, uh, is sort of defined in the beginning of the of the uh, sort of clip helps. So when you define sounds of like saying this sound is this character, this sound is that character, it lends itself naturally to being able to place where the sounds are coming from. And that's that's just without any kind of panning or worldization or anything like that. So I think it, I, I'm still going to double down on the developing sort of like that sonic identity for each character. And that would go miles to uh, help with where things are coming from. Sweet. Jeff, any final thoughts as far as content stuff? Maybe in this last clip? It's pretty uh, short, but just, uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, something that is <clears throat> something that's common across all three of the um, of the clips that were chosen for this reel uh, that I really appreciate are the um, the differential in perspective. Uh, some like great long shots, close shots uh, in in all three all three of them. Not not as much in the third one. The third one is actually pretty up close and personal. I just wanted to call that out. And like, thanks for some like lovely holistic sound design there, where you're actually addressing things like background ambiences and things like that to make it feel like a fully realized uh, piece of sound. Um, <clears throat> for the final piece here, uh, I really love that this is you're kind of go from like long distance to medium distance to short distance with the Titanfall example here. Um, the f and my I imagine that this is a hey, let me show off some of my like Foley skills type of stuff. Um, and that's a really competitive space that uh, the people who really go after this type of uh, Foley work and like that kind of like um, combat movement design, uh, there's some like amazing examples out there and like the <laughs> consumer expectation for how that stuff sounds is really advanced. And so uh, the the actual cloth movement, body movement type of stuff is nice. It's the res <clears throat> resulting impact and some of the detail of when those bodies hit a wall hit the ground that kind of stuff that i'd like to hear a little bit more of and i'd expect to hear a little bit more of but like on the whole super strong examples here mm -hmm. so i guess uh that brings me to do you think that uh in a crowd beer is standing out in a positive way i'd say so far yeah yeah for sure yeah for sure here from here sweet Okay, awesome. I like, well, I like that. I like that beginning, man. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> That's the idea. Nice work, Virgo. Jonesy. Well done, the chat. Okay, uh, I guess I'm keen to just move on from there then. One of these. <laughs> nice work, pal. Very nice. Uh, we're moving to such a clip right now. We got four more and like 40 minutes. Killer. We're doing it. Let's do Sandy... Jiao, is that right? Jiao? That's how you say that? Uh, full volume, full volume. Okay. Sound designer, game audio, sound music, credits about. Okay, let's go full screen. Let's go three, two, one, and I didn't six. <laughs>
Okay. There you go. We got some seriously riot focused <laughs> reel here. Uh, okay, so I guess we'll start with Jeff here. Um, just any first impression thoughts before we dive in? First of all, I have to recuse myself from commentary on the Twisted Fate level up because I designed that one for Legends of Runeterra. Um, well, so maybe that's worth that's that. worth maybe starting with then. So, I mean, I know I've had, uh, for example, like Rob Kreckle from Naughty Dog was in here a while back, and he was saying he loves seeing, for example, like Uncharted redesigned or Last of Us redesigned, but yeah. just it comes with risks, I suppose. Is that right? I mean, there's definitely elements in there where I'm like, God, I wish I did that. Um, <laughs> no, it's it's really cool. I mean, I'm just going to give you uh, – th this made a really strong first impression on me. Um, I mean, super cute ident at the start and finish aside. <clears throat> I think the range shown in this particular reel is mega strong. Like, this is the kind of reel that um, – I often will tell people to, you know, try to purpose build your reel to some extent, depending on who you're approaching as a, you know, as a client or as a potential hire. Right. But um, this is the kind of thing where I'm like, wow, this this person could design across a number of genres and scales of game. Awesome. Uh, Marco, do you want to talk yeah. about, do, do you want to recuse yourself or are you cool with this? <laughs> oh, no, I'm cool with it. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I think um, it, it, I think the kickoff alone with that little logo that he put on on that is just like it, it already kind of shows you of what you're kind of gonna get into right it's like oh cool like I, I feel like I'm gonna get entertained and um you know seeing um right off the bat some League of Legends stuff um you know I'm loving the way he's using the tones I'm really trying to emphasize that um th there are certain little things that I think we can coach if he was you know gonna get, get hired and um I think with this scene right here I really like uh, his approach here, it really sounds um, like original. It, it really sounds like he was really <clears throat> thinking about how these elements should sound, how the motor should sound. Um, and then when we get to this scene, this feels really great. Like, I feel like this is very um, promotional work. Like, if he was doing a quick scissor reel or something that, you know, like promote for like an anime out there, um, I think his approach was, was dead on. So, uh, yeah, good stuff, man. Yeah, I love this mix of, of, I mean, really tight sync kind of work in the opening shots into this animated bit and how it's much looser just due to the nature of the animation. There's a little more like space for Sandy to kind of fill in the gaps themselves and say, well, what's, what's the sound of this running actually? Cause, I mean, this is not like footstep, footstep as, as they run away, right? It's like really loose. So yeah, it was cool. I was really into it. It was nice. Uh, Curtis, do you have any content thoughts to add up here? Yeah, I, you know, again, I agree with with Marco and Jeff. This is just super strong uh, in general um, across the board. Uh, I loved the 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 piece at the end. I thought the the focus was kept very clear in every shot. That that can be that can be hard when shots are are flipping back and forth real fast and being able to clearly sort of tell the sound story for each shot effectively and not confuse the audience as the shots are flipping back and forth very quickly. I think that's, it's a, uh, you know, it's definitely a skill. I think the one thing for me though is, um, I am not a fan of using a lot of reverb. And I think one of the things that I noticed, especially in like the, I think it's the ABO Genesis uh, sound re redesign bit, uh, was, when things were flying across the screen, I was hearing a lot of verb. And I think that was muddying up the clarity just slightly. But, you know, some some things come down to taste. And uh, that's just sort of my taste. I, I tend to sort of back up off the verb a bit in my design. But mm -hmm. once again, it's just a really strong piece. Yeah, one thing we, we've seen here and there is it, it seems like a common symptom. Or I'm not sure symptoms are the right word. Uh, I guess the the incentive to use more reverb is often like perhaps insecurity in in one's sound design. Like, oh, I'll just I'll just douse it in hot sauce, and now I'm like cooking to his delicious. You know, <laughs> like that's it's. Uh, <laughs> and I think that this design's really strong. So that that is one thing that stood out to me as well. Actually, is that it seemed like this could come down, and like the design itself didn't really need it as a. I mean, I, I dare I say crutch, 
but yeah, like that's a big time nitpick, of course. Yeah. On, on the whole, don't don't cover up sound design with reverb. You know, if you don't need it, you don't need it. Take it out. Mm-hmm. Let it shine. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. Uh, yeah plus so one. Seems, sorry, was that a plus one? <laughs> One. Yeah. Yeah. plus one okay <laughs> so i guess um I mean, it's pretty obvious as far as what kind of gig the sandy is looking to get right now so material selection can be skipped over entirely uh geez i have not much else to add to this one i guess one thing i saw in the chat added was uh tuba here was asking about um logo sound design jeff you kind of touched upon the kind of cutesy intro is that like a, a good thing for you or do you kind of like find it distracting how do you feel with the whole intro logo sound design for, I mean, I feel like the, uh, the the intro logo ident type of stuff for, for an audio designer is such a beautiful opportunity to just give a little bit of information about your personality and your style, um, like in 1.5 seconds kind of thing. Yeah. So I, I'm all for them. Like some, I know that there are some people who who don't think they belong there. Um, I think they're a great tool. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, apparently, in the game audio bible. They recommend against being too crazy design on your intro stuff. But I don't know, man. Like, I just, from, from my perspective, I feel like the more, I, I've often harped on Real Talk, like, the, the whole concept of hiring represents an assurance of trust. Like, you are, as, as, a, as a prospective candidate, if you're applying for a gig, you are basically saying, hey, you can trust me, and of all your candidates, I am the least risk. So... What that comes down to is proving you are more serious than everyone else and you put in more time and you're you're the best choice so if you have this awesome intro logo thing that you either designed yourself or had commissioned for you or something and you put all this work into it that just says to me uh, i mean it's, it's one of many possible possible bullet points that just add up towards yes i'm very serious check it out so i'm i'm all for it i, I was surprised to see you say in the chat there that someone said like they recommend against them entirely that seems surprising to me but um, anyway, okay, we are at 4.56. I'm keen to, I mean, again, not much feedback left to give in this thing. You guys keen to move on? Yeah, sure. Okay, uh, I guess it's, it seems like they're standing out, but Marco, just, I'll just, just be more uh, explicit. Do you think that right now Sandy is standing out in a crowd with this, with this reel? Um, I think so. I think Sandy would be uh, totally a contender. Checking out, you know, her reel, seeing what she's offering. Uh, I think, you know, off the bat, like hearing that little logo and you know, hearing that little sound, those are so hard to do. And for her to nail it like that, um, just shows that, like again, emphasizing she's serious. She's a sound designer. She's willing to do this. She loves sound. Like you could totally tell that just within that little like kickoff. I love it. With the sick Unity bio photo also. Nice work. Yo, that, can I just comment on that thing in particular that you just sure. said, Marco? Because I think it's so important. Um, like the, the thing about like don't put idents on your, on your reel and stuff like that. There was definitely a, a period of time that we went through as an industry where we were just like, games are serious business. And um, I think we're kind of on the other side of that now <laughs> where like anything that you can do in your reel to like express the joy of games and in particular, your personal joy for the craft of audio design, like put it in there. Like we feel it as people who are going to be hiring people on and, and bringing you onto our teams. Like that's, that's exactly the kind of stuff we're looking for. Plus one. Yep. Plus one. Excellent. Okay. And some, and some gigs you've worked on, like some legit gigs. Sandy, you're doing it. Nice work. Really nice. Give me one of these. Killer. Really nice. Okay, daydream sound. So I know that I said at the beginning of the stream that I don't look at websites ahead of time, um, apart from just opening the pages. I was trying to put the demo reel on the front page. That's the one thing I was trying to do for all these web pages. And I will say that it's perhaps my own incompetence, but there was definitely a moment of confusion on this page. Uh, sorry, it's uh, Theo. I'm not sure your last name, Theo, but this is what you're about. Uh, my name is Theo. Okay, well, <laughs> your name is Theo. That's all we know. So, Theo, if you're in the chat, um, just a heads up, just from my perspective, at least my experience, I rolled in here and I saw a portfolio, just like, un- I didn't even acknowledge it actively. I just saw that portfolio was kind of like darkened. So, I thought this was where I am right now. 
and I was clicking like contact and about and testimonials and I was like, where is the demo? Is there no demo? And then finally I saw in the about, it said click portfolio to uh, see my stuff. And I was like, oh, I can click this. <laughs> so uh, take from that what you will. But um, when it comes down to hundreds of folks applying for a given gig, those seconds are sometimes important. So it may be worth, I know we were saying we weren't going to dive into websites too, too much, but uh, it might be worth considering that, that small detail. So, um, but now that we're here, I found it. Don't worry. <laughs> we, all, we all found the page. So let's go. Uh, oh, and you're here to daydream sound in the chat. There they are. What's up, Theo? So we'll go full screen. This is a minute and 51. So it's about twice, a little under twice the length of the other ones we've seen so far. So we'll see uh, how it feels. We'll probably watch through the whole thing. It doesn't seem too crazy long, but we'll, uh, we may end up talking about the length. We'll see. So three, two, one, and go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, unmute. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> We're wrapped. Okay. So, uh, Jeff, perhaps I'll start with you. Rob K. I was just talking about you, man. What's up? Rob Kreckle in the chat. Good to see you. Um, Jeff, last reel, I asked you about like length of stuff. And you said one minute always feels right to you. So how does this one feel to you as far as length goes? Kind of long. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh i mean there's yeah it felt a little long and especially because there are a couple of clips there where um like as a person who's not just as a listener but also as a viewer uh there are times when it's just like you got the point across <clears throat> in half the time mm -hmm. both the destiny and the dark souls uh examples i think fall into that category the hollow the hollow knight one was actually Quite a lot tighter i felt like i was there was a lot more to see in here in that particular example whereas the the dark souls one yeah half the time could have done it destiny half the time could have done it mm -hmm. i saw josh uh, adam bell from cloud imperium in the chat also saying that it might be worth just pulling this stuff out of the um sorry i was pointing at the uh the crossfades in between as far as going to black saying what it is and then carrying on um, like that titling being there, I mean, I don't know what you guys, like perhaps Marco, I'll go with you for this one here. Like that kind of titling, it is, I so much prefer like the lower third approach, like that we've seen in the previous, previous, uh, reels just to keep things moving. So yeah, how do you feel with that as far as that presentation on the, on the, uh, titling? Yeah, I totally agree. Um, when you have a lower third, that's just like, it, it feels better because it's not in your face too much. You, you see it, it's there. Uh, you, you can constantly have it there to remind the viewer, but when you do break away and you have these title um, screens come in, it just feels very, very old school, I think, you know, uh, mm -hmm. especially being in post-production in the early 2000s. It just feels like that 90s kind of going into 2000 mm -hmm. cut editorial. Uh, 
by just going straight forward or moving, you know, from scene to scene like we saw with Sandy and and the other ones, I think that that works better. Uh, and same thing with something that Jeff said is the uh, Destiny and and the Dark Souls. I think just kind of ran a little too long. Um, it kind of just felt very uh, just a little stagnant, I think. And when it came to to um, Hollow Knights, that felt really good because I felt like he was playing perspective there. Mm -hmm. um, and really changing me, changing the, the the states, and I think that that's pretty cool. That as a sound designer, you can also think about that than just thinking of something so linear of gun shooting and regular sword fights. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. Like the Hollow Knight. I mean, a I was kind of surprised to see Hollow Knight as the third game in this thing. Like we had this uh, like very AAA project to start, and then yeah, Dark Souls three was it, um, and then Hollow Knight is like a, just a like total. Uh, you know, hard, like, 90 degree, turn, 90, 90 degree turn from these things. So I guess this comes down to, like, the material selection thing again. So if you had to guess, Curtis, like, what kind of what kind of gig do you think Theo's looking to land with this kind of reel? Well, it's it, it's definitely interesting. And, and I want to uh, touch on a point that you made about how the third one being Hollow Knight is, is interesting. Um, is because it is such a digression from the Dark Souls and the Destiny, uh, I guess, in terms of the the style, the style change. And I think that's primarily the difficult part about stringing these three together is if you do... I mean, it's obviously that th this person wants to be in games, but mm -hmm. what type of game is important uh i think and and destiny and dark souls is in a different category uh than hollow knight and your design needs to change to fit that um i think one of the strongest parts about this reel though is the attention to detail when you look at the 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 sound design for destiny there are things that match like for instance when uh that shield comes up and you see that that ring that kind of like spreads from the center to the outer edges of the screen. There's a sound for that. They're the, the they're hitting gameplay with sound with sound design. And I think that's very important. Um, and then when you look at the attention to detail with the the uh, Hollow Knight, they're doing really interesting things. Like they're dropping the the sound volume and low passing on the when they pause the game and look at the map. You know, and that is those are really good things to see because it it shows that this this reel understands gameplay. It understands some of the standards that are happening in video games right now. I think the attention to detail is actually um, stronger than the content. I'm going to get on my reverb soapbox again. I think the <laughs> Destiny, Destiny thing had a little bit too much reverb, uh, kind of took away from some of the sound design, but. Yeah, I think it's important, you know, to to choose whether or not you want to be doing the Destinies or the Hollow Knights and really tailor your sound towards those unless you feel like you're strong in all of them, which is hard to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super hard. I mean, I think of like the last reel, for instance, we, we loaded up and it's like Riot game, Riot game, you know, and, and that kind of that kind of reel makes it real clear as far as what kind of gig you're aiming for and if you're up against somebody like that let's say you're you know looking to work at bungie or something like or like from or whatever like a, a team that makes games like these and you're up against somebody of your exact same skill level and their reel is all focused in the kind of games that studio works on and yours has maybe one game like that and like two that aren't or like two that are and one that isn't that that simply it's not that it's hurting you like having this kind of uh you know diversion from the from the bungee stuff and the from stuff into Hollow Knight, it's not hurting you. It's just not helping you. So in terms of like having a, a, a plus to your to your reel can can go a long way. Um, so one thing I want to ask about. So you mentioned detail there. Uh, in this opening clip, so I'm I'm curious like how how much are you of a stickler for like I mean a gameplay clip like this is super ambitious. There's so much going on. But I mean, there's tons of stuff that was missing. Also, like the the other characters, like walking backwards and shooting and stuff, we hear nothing of. So it seems like it's a very focused, like on the player character kind of thing. Are you okay with that, or do you want to hear everything? I think it it, it really depends. Um, you know, the 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 action that's happening in a first person shooter. Uh, when there is a lot of action going on, the mix is very important. And so the more action that occurs, the more, I think, uh, at least in, in, in my experience with 
playing a lot of shooters, the the focus is on the player when it starts to get really chaotic because you need to understand when you are doing an action. But then it, there needs to be breaks, and those breaks need to be sacred for gameplay moments. If you if something is going to affect you that can, you know, cause CC or damage or something that's very dangerous, you need to be able to hear it. And so as long as you keep those in mind and you hit those in your gameplay redesign, I think that's going to show that you understand how the game plays and that you can sort of design with that mix in mind. It's it's very important with uh, first-person shooters. Mm-hmm. It's one thing as well I've heard mentioned from other guests is that like someone being higher junior is not going to be the person who's like doing the mixing, for instance. So they're they've been like more okay with it but i think the main consideration that that is worth uh thinking about with something like this theo or anybody else for that matter is when you have something missing in a redesign just being like very clear that, you, that it's clear that you know it's missing kind of thing right because if you if you have something like for instance we mentioned like the absence of some movement sounds in the spider-man redesigned from uh was it daniel i think uh, like that kind of thing it's not clear if daniel is like making a creative choice or if Daniel just perhaps didn't consider that as a, as you know worth worth some attention, so yeah, when I see something like this, it's like there's like again there's so much going on. This is crazy ambitious for a piece to redesign. I saw Josh saying also that in the chat. So yeah, it's uh, it, it did seem like you were focused a little bit. So I guess I'm just I'm not super clear, um, and maybe that's worth you know thinking about as far as uh, you know what ma- making it clear that you know something's missing or not basically. So, okay, Marco, do you have any thoughts on design things, maybe for uh, for Dark Souls in particular? Uh, for Dark Souls, huh? Okay, yeah. Um, I think that they could have added a little bit more weight to to that big giant dude. Um, he probably has a name, but I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think a little bit more weight to even his um, his his you know his like his swings of his of his weapon. I think could have really emphasize the you know his size compared to the player mm-hmm. size um like they a, did sound like a, a little generic mix, eh? but but i think um that's kind of what what it is it's dark souls but you know i think if he was going for like the genre of you know dark souls or uh what, what are the the other ones elder scrolls or any of those type of games i mm-hmm. think um his design approach is is there um there there are little things that we could have you know massage like some of his blood splats and stuff like that but um overall i think he he sees where the beep, the big beats are and then how, how to approach it yeah uh, one thing i heard there was like a was there a vocal pain in the middle like a like a ugh is it here let me just hear this again i think it was here i'm sure there was so bear with me i'm sure that i'm sure that here oh my god they make a liar to me. <laughs> I don't know. I can't find it. I thought for sure there's a vocal like "ugh" in there, and I was like, "Does Dark Souls have those?" <laughs> but perhaps I uh, I imagine that. Sean heard it too. Okay, well, someone's backing me up. There you go. Um, I don't recall in any of the Dark Souls games hearing my own voice. Am I just do I have a bad memory? I can't recall. Anyways, uh, okay, it's now at nine fifty. We're nine minutes and fifty seconds on this one. So I guess the final thing is, uh, Jeff, you can wrap this up and just tell me, do you think that Theo with this reel is standing out in the crowd in a positive way just yet? Hmm. Uh, not just, not just yet. I think there's like a little bit of, a little bit of personality and a little bit of refining the, the selections here that could probably help. Um, I'd say that the stand, the, the Hollow Knight example was actually the standout for me. Um, the other ones just need a little bit of uh, personal personal flair. All right. Well, with that, let's move on to our final. <laughs> my bad, not final. Two more. Oh, my God. How'd this happen? Two more. William and Lowe. <laughs> <sighs> okay, two more. William and Lowe, sound design. Let's go. Uh, this was one more. Um, it's like a little bit hidden, but video game sound. Right there it is. Okay, wonderful. And we got one minute on the dot. William, let's go. Okay, we got it out. Three, two, one, and go.
Okay. Prompt. Felt so quick in the last one. <laughs> Flew by. Uh, Curtis, do you have any first impression thoughts to share? Sure. Um, so I think uh, in the first clip, the small feet having that reverb is actually very important to 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 sell the size. Otherwise, her little tiny feet are just little clicks, right? So having that verb really sells the space. But I think the problem uh, came in when you had this giant character come into the picture and that character's feet didn't really sound that much bigger uh, in size. And so I think that uh, the the gap could have been played up a little bit. Um, I think the, the third piece, um, you know, starting out, uh, the problematic part of that uh, section is is that there's like this l very large machine on the screen with not a lot of sound, and then once it hits the elevator, then all your sound kicks in. I think that um, you know you need to make sure you're you're covering your subject uh, in your piece. If you can't, if you don't cover the subject, then I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to be listening for. But once the sound started to kick in, I, you know, I started to get it, and, it and, and the detail was, was starting to be shown. So I think it's very important to make sure that your subject is, is covered. All right. And, uh, yeah, so Marco, by the CSE, Jeff is busy in the chat. Leave him alone. <laughs> so, Marco, um, are you getting anything from this middle piece? Like, what do you, what's your takeaway from this uh, by the sea unity and wise? Right on. Um, I think overall what I'm getting – uh, from his, this reel is that he he's trying to come in as a journalist. Um, he's showing that he can do some sound design, but then going like this implementation from WYS, I think to Unity. What he was saying, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's showing that I, I can also, you know, create levels, you know, level sounds and 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 add these different states of transitions and and emitters and things like that. Um, and and that's where I think with the industry sometimes in games it's like understanding what really your your approach is you know um, these are good showcases to 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 really throw out there because for me like if I was looking for someone like that in a junior level I would be like wow he's really interested in implementation and he also has good sound design chops mm -hmm. um, and the why, why I say that is because you know when you do listen to to the very first clip he he is hitting certain notes that I think are adding that perspective and really reflecting that and also immersing the player in 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 this kind of uh suspense you know kind of horror type of feel mm -hmm. um you know again with some coaching totally could have been there but i think um already alone his his approach he he is kind of understanding these beats and how he wants to break it down so the player can feel immersed so um yeah mm -hmm. i think overall um especially with this middle clip he is kind of showcasing that he likes to immerse the player into these environments. Mm -hmm. So is that is like the level, you know, jumping in there doing showing like they have experience in unity or experience in wise, like that kind of thing. Is that something that that, for example, like uh, yourselves, like in AAA, is that valuable to you or are you cool just with like content creation focused people? Um, you know, I think it goes both ways. You know, um, it all depends to what project, something that I, I've always um, kind of evaluate when I'm on a project it's like what is the project what is the need for the project and if it's someone uh kind of like like um like this right here if I needed someone who was technical but also had good sound design chops and understands it um this is a candidate that I would go, totally go for um knowing that I can rely on him and understand systems because mm -hmm. he's willing to dig into that and showcase it but also I can rely on him on a sound design and he seems very coachable coachable because his approach is already there. Now it's just massaging it. Right, right. So, um, yeah, so I think it all depends, like, what the project needs are, you know, and, and then knowing what you're applying for, too, mm -hmm. um, and then making sure that your your reel can showcase that. Yeah, and Tubi here in the, in the chat rolls in with a good point, saying that it's important, like, I mean, just like a general manager of restaurants kind of working a day on each job, knowing what the dish, dishwasher is going through during a busy day can be really important. So understanding things like here's where audio hooks can go in a game is is uh, you know pretty pretty helpful too, even just to communicate with your your peers and at your workplace. That said, uh, maybe confirm or deny here, William, in the chat. Are you looking for a like freelance kind of gigs, or are you looking for a studio gig? Because I'm getting freelance from this, but I'm not entirely certain. It's uh, 
I'd be, I'd be curious to hear. You're gonna do a walkthrough of the middle clip two to dig deeper into some of the randomization on local, uh, local sorry, location of emitters and such. You're looking for a studio, ah, okay. All right, um, maybe that's worth mentioning really quick here, Jeff. So from this reel, like from these pieces, these three pieces that William has chosen, are you, are you getting that impression that he's looking for a, like a studio gig? I am getting that impression um, for sure. I'm going to probably echo something that I said here earlier, which is the, uh, the by the sea clip. Um, like if this, is, if this is my first time knowing anything about you, which it is, uh, the, the energy curve of this one is, is pretty disparate, which is like you open really strong with uh, little nightmares. Then there's by the sea, which is uh, pretty tame and like a technical exercise. And then you come back to far loan sales. Um, I might consider replacing something that's a little more content focused uh, for your second clip and then saving your by the sea uh, technical thing for like an advanced topics video. Because because if I had watched just the um, just the little nightmares and the and the far loan sales, you'd have my attention and be like, hey, look down here and check out some more about some levels that I built and some uh, implementation. Cool. Uh, I guess just uh, to finish off there, Jeff, do you think with this <coughs> reel, do you think William is currently standing out in the crowd in a positive way? <laughs> if for no other reason, sorry to laugh, it's like, it's amazing the choices that you've made here. Like your taste in games is like A1. I love it. Uh, like <laughs> far loan sales was one of my top games of the past few years. Yo. And if anybody listening hasn't played it, cancel your weekend plans and go get that thing. <laughs> um, but like it stands out if if uh, like your choices here are so novel. Um, I don't think I've seen anybody do redesigns of either of these two games uh, in a reel before. Mm. And like it's just it's just kind of a curveball. So like <laughs> you you afforded yourself a little bit of uh, of interest just based on those things. Um, but like your content design and your your feel for perspective and building interest in these scenes is is really strong. Yeah, it's definitely got my attention. Cool. All right. Well, we have a minimal time left for Justin Solarek, so let's go ahead and give William one of these. Thank you, William. Um, I have not played that game, by the way, Jeff, so I guess I know my weekend plans are. <laughs> Maybe I should. Um, yeah, I've seen Little Nightmares like one time otherwise redesigned. Otherwise, yeah, it's super unusual, so nice work. Um, Dead Space. This one's four minutes long, so I'm, I, have a, I have a proposition um, this seems more like a single designed piece as opposed to a kind of more traditional reel. It says dead space sound. I'm just going to do a quick, quick click. It seems like it's, let's see here. We got a lot of black at the end. Is this even loading? What the heck? Was it only audio? Oh, it's audio for the last minute and a half. What the heck? So there's a minute and 20 seconds of black. It seems, or is there something else here? It seems like it's black. Okay, well, regardless, it's all dead space something. So let's just read the about really quick. I, Justin Solarek, Solarek, do not own any rights to dead space in any way, shape, or form. Yes. All video shown here is originally made by Eric Zara Zaragoza. Okay. So a live action trailer for one of my all-time favorite horror games, Dead Space. I decided to take the video and put my own sounds into it to showcase my love for the game and the ability to design and implement sound. I hope you enjoy. Okay, yeah. So this is this seems to be not kind of a a more typical reel as we've seen in these past submissions. Um, so maybe that's worth touching on really quick here, guys. So when you get a submission like this compared to a more traditional demo reel, uh, does that at all color your impression before you even start, no, press the play button? Yeah, I'll start with, uh, with Marco on that one. Uh, can you repeat that again? I'm sorry, I got caught up. No, no sweat. Do the you, chat. <laughs> do you have any, uh, like, is there any kind of, when, when you see a video like this where it's like, here's single piece, with no like transitions, it's one thing only, and it's a redesign that's like five minutes long. That's my submission for for like a job, for instance. Because yeah, this whole this whole stream is all about like looking at the submitted pieces as if they are the primary piece in a job application. So if you see this piece versus like a one minute long reel, it is tailored and has like edits and cuts between different things. Um, before you even press the play button, do you feel like your impression is colored, or are you keen to to watch either one? Uh, so I think uh, this this one's tough, man. I um. Maybe because it's dead space, I would give it a <laughs> a, a run. Um, but I think just knowing that it's four minutes um, long for a demo and it's just going to be one genre, 
then I would probably pass. Right. Uh, because I think what the what the demo reel, you you want you want to see the versatility of that of that sound designer, um, especially because I I come from the the world of voice, and mm. hearing a lot of those voice demos, uh, those voice actors just give you such a broad range that I think as sound designers, because we express ourselves with sound, we should kind of somewhat express ourselves a little broadly right. and to just choose one genre one video you're kind of narrowing yourself down a little bit yeah for especially sure. for four minutes too yes four minutes so let's do this let's listen to a minute straight and we'll see how we do and we'll kind of see if we want to keep listening to more okay let's let's do that i'll pause it a minute and we'll see where we're at so uh three two one and go All right, that was a minute. So, are we want to, list, want to keep listening to another minute yet, or how do you feel, guys? <laughs> but I want to know more. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's getting a long, it's taking a long time to get there, though. Uh, let's listen to like thirty more and see how we're doing. <laughs> so, okay. Three, two, one, and go. Okay. I opted to just watch the whole thing, guys. Hope that's okay. <laughs> it's three minutes long. There's still a minute and 20, though. I don't understand what's there. It's just like more audio only design, I guess, or something. I don't know. Some kind of dead space. <laughs> uh, yeah. These claps are for, are for you. <laughs> okay. All right. We're at five thirty. We didn't quite make it under the five thirty hours, the, the time limit, guys. I apologize, it's my fault. But we're really close. So, uh, I guess I'll start with Jeff. Um, I have I mean, so many thoughts. Yeah. So I guess first, let's 
Like we kind of talked about the presentation thing, like lengthwise. Uh, we'll maybe put that aside and just look at this in isolation. Is that cool? Sure. So yeah, go for it. Content wise. I saw Rob complaining about music in the demo reel too, but uh, I'll let you do your own thing. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, it, it kind of depends on what you're, what you're trying to be. Like if you were a post house and you wanted to show like a fully formed uh, short film that had sound and music and dialogue, sure, that's fine. But if you're specifically looking to do sound design, yeah, I might back off on the music. Um, I, I'll give you like a little bit of a, a confession about myself, which is like Dead Space is definitely in my like pantheon of game sound. I know it was like from a long time ago at this point, but yeah. like any video that says redesign of Dead Space, I'm kind of like, okay, let's see what you got, yeah, right? See, because it's kind of like challenge accepted kind of thing. Um, and there are some like, yeah, to Jeff Lee's point in the chat here, it's just like it held my attention and I watched much more of it than, than I was expecting to. Mm -hmm, like, sure. It sounds, sounds like we all did. And like some really just nice development in here. Like I was, my, my attention was captured and held. Would I put this forward as a sound design reel? Probably not, but it's definitely a like a supplemental video that I would um, put, you know, alongside my my sort of like flash reel to say like, hey, here's another project I did. I hope you like, you know, you know my sense of storytelling or whatever that I've done in this video. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so I guess, <laughs> yeah, Dead Space is like a, a pretty universally understood to be amazing sounding game. So, I mean, do you have notes on like? I mean, I guess anything really, like space or the creatures or anything. For I mean, in, in terms of like, I think the spatialization of sound in this is really nice. Uh, some of the some of the individual elements got a little bit repetitive. That's like mm -hmm. just a thing. Like especially when you get to the alarm that's going off at like the two wherever that was minute mark, it's kind of like a relentless alarm, uh, and just kind of starts to turn my ear away. Um, but yeah, like some really nice really nice perspective pulls some like like audio only jump scare type of stuff um yeah you know, some of the individual content's really strong nice uh curtis so one thing i see uh rob mentioned in the chat and I, I was thinking this myself too is like this is this is almost like a game um like adjacent piece because it's a short film based on a game like it's not the game so yeah, the post-production house thing seems like that's kind of a, pr a prevalent thought. Like, are you thinking that watching this? You're thinking, oh, it's not really the game. It's just like it's a film or is it really does, does that matter to you? Well, you know, the the horror genre is interesting because it takes time to become scared. And and you have to have and I think that's the only reason why I would watch this if 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 i was developing a horror game and looking at hiring somebody is because right. i under, i understand that it takes a moment to get there and but uh you know i think that dead space you can do this with gameplay potentially you'd have to find the right gameplay you'd have to find that sort of like ramp up into energy um in 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 footage of the actual game I think what this lends itself to in terms of strengths to showcase is that you have the ability to really curate the sound of the monsters. I think in this case it was it came off a little bit uh, it was a little loud, it was a little distorted. Uh, it felt a little bit more human than I would like mm. uh, in terms of, of uh, the sound design of the of the the monsters. But I, th I understand I understand the idea and I understand the, the approach. Um, I think it may have missed the mark just slightly, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a, a few kind of thoughts of like, oh, it's like it, it sounds a bit like a dude through a guitar amp kind of thing. Like that was on, on yeah, the, the a little final. Bit, yeah. yeah, the final scream. Uh, I guess, Marco, do you have any final thoughts to add this as far as uh, like content stuff before we wrap it up? Yeah, uh, quick wrap up. Um, I think for for me, just seeing this uh, was pretty cool. Uh, I guess this is one of the ones I probably would have missed out if I didn't check it out. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I think if I were evaluating this gentleman uh, or this candidate, uh, I think it's he's more suited, or he or she is more suited for um, for post production. 
I, I think the approach and their linear attack and some of these moments totally feels like they fit in that space. Like if they were in a post house designing this type of stuff, they, they would hit it. Um, I think game wise, I'm not sure really the experience of this, uh, of the individual, um, you know, I, I, I just feel like it's for a post. If I was evaluating this, like definitely I would go with this guy. Right. If it's, it's we just were doing like promos. Point. Yeah. So for, for game wise, this just simply is unclear. So Justin, if you're in the chat, I'm not sure I haven't seen your, your name in there at all, but, uh, if you are in the chat, then yeah, it's, it's like, there's some really cool choices here and, and nice work on the whole, like solid foundation across the, across the board, like horror wise, nice work. Um, it's just not clear as far as if you have the kind of like the game chops that a studio might be looking for. That's all. So it's, it comes down to a, a which is often the case. It comes down to a, a, um, a breakdown in communication rather than actual skill sets. So maybe something to consider there. Having watched the previous reels, if you did, then yeah, there's lots of, uh, lots of good directions to follow there too. So I'll give you one of these. I guess the last, it's not really worth saying like, are you sending out? Cause we're just not really sure. Like for post, then then maybe for games, it's kind of like a who knows right now. So we'll give you one of these. Thank you so much, Justin. And gentlemen, we're now at 536. Please accept my deepest apologies. <laughs> so close. So close. I'm trying to keep this train moving. Totally though. fine. I enjoyed it. Killer. Yeah, All same right. here. When do we do it again? <laughs> Yeah, right? This is way cool. Well, that's, that's excellent feedback. I did a good time. Um, and I hope everyone who submitted had a good time as well over in the chat. I know we couldn't address every single thing being said in the chat, but I saw everyone being really active and uh, involved. Really appreciate seeing that. Um, it's pretty amazing. This community is like so mutually supportive, even though uh, there's a lot of competition going on between each you know studios and, and ind individuals. So good on you. Uh, okay, so I guess the very last thing, I do want to say a huge, huge thank you again. This claps for you guys. <laughs> To Marco, Curtis, and Jeff making the time. Some claps hey. in the chat for them, too. Appreciate that. <laughs> and I guess the, this is the final thing. Um, if there is anything that you want to bring to light as far as, like, riot things going on, like game stuff you're working on, uh, that you can, you know, legally talk about, that kind of stuff, uh, the floor is yours for sure. Go for it. Go for it, Jeff. Me? Can I go first? Go We're hiring. Go. We're hiring. Please send us your material. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> yeah, sorry. That was, that was directed at Jeff. I think he'd pull rank, but I wasn't sure. <laughs> just, that's the oh, no. audio no, director no, in the that, room. That's what's going on, uh, at least on the uh, Legends of Runeterra team. Yeah, we're, we're hiring right now. Okay, excellent. Yeah, definitely. Send those reels over. I want to check them out. All right. Uh, I guess I'll leave it there, guys. Um, again, thanks so much. And I guess I'll, uh, I'll see you next time we have y'all on. <laughs> have a good night. Awesome. Yeah. You yeah. too. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye bye. All right. That was fun. I was looking forward to that for a long time. I want to give a little thanks to E Man Da Bomb in the chat to Gunlab. What's up, pal? Uh, thank you so much for helping to organize this whole thing and the rest of the folks at Riot as well who were involved in, in you know, okaying everything and, and making sure it's all organized to, uh, to, to have as smooth a stream as possible. So, really appreciate that. It's, it's really not a given that a studio, especially of Riot size, would be cool with doing this kind of thing. So yeah, I really, really appreciate that. Uh, okay, let's get back to some Alex Barnhart. If you didn't see that, Alex, I saw you in the chat, man. But I wasn't sure if you were here to, to hear the intro or not. Um, we were playing some He Heard Footsteps. <laughs> not sure if you're aware of that or not. Let's play some Origins. So good. Good tunes. Let's go. Okay, and of course... Uh, Real quick, we are doing Real Talk every two weeks right now, of course. We're into like the know, third third episode of doing it every two weeks. And I super appreciate the time off every second of week. So thank you for understanding that and your patience and waiting an extra week, more than one, one extra week than usual. In two weeks' time, we have Caleb Epps uh, out of Facebook joining us. I think he's working on Horizon stuff. I'm not really sure yet. I'll have to ask him these things. But I know he's had a, a boatload of experience in a variety of audio, certainly in the game space. I'm looking forward to that too. If you yourself are watching and want to submit your work for, for Real Talk, feel free to do so below at uh, Power Up Audio on Twitter or at Regimi K, that's me. You'll reach us either way. Or if you're not on Twitter, that's fine, of course. You can feel free to reach out using our contact form at powerupaudio.com. All right, and one more thanks to the chat for everyone being involved. Really love seeing everyone's, uh, love seeing the regulars. It's awesome. <laughs> so I'll see you in two weeks. Thanks a lot.